Mandible is the only movable bone of all the bones of the face. Mandible is a horseshoe shaped bone with body of the mandible, ramus, coronoid process, alveolar process, and the condylar process, consisting of the head and neck. Where the head articulates with the glenoid fossa, for the formation of temporomandibular joint. Mandible is derived from the first branchial arch, which is called the mandibular arch. The branchial arches start developing, at about fourth week in utero. Branchial arches are bilateral mesodermal swellings, that develop at around fourth week in utero. The mesodermal core of each arch is surrounded by invasion of the ectomesenchymal tissue that augments it. There are five branchial arches in total. The fifth being transitory. The first arch is the mandibular arch, and the second arch is the hyoid arch. The branchial arches are separated by the four branchial grooves on the external aspect and five pharyngeal pouches in the inner aspect of the forehead. Each branchial arch has four components, a central cartilage rod, that forms the skeleton of the arch, a muscular component, called the branchiomere, a vascular component, consisting of an aortic arch artery running around the pharynx, from the ventrally located heart to the dorsal aorta, and a nervous element, consisting of sensory and special visceral motor fibers, of one or more cranial nerve supplying the mucosa, and the branchial muscle arising from that arch. The cartilage of the first arch is called Meckel's cartilage, developing at about 41st to 45th day in utero. Meckel's cartilage provides a template for the development of mandible. The derivatives of the Meckel's cartilage include the ear ossicles, malleus and incus, spine of sphenoid, anterior ligament of malleus, and spinomandibular ligament. The muscles derived from first arch are the muscles of mastication, mylohyoid muscle, anterior belly of digastric muscle, tensor tympani, and tensor veli palatine. All the muscles are supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve, which is the nerve of the first arch. The mandible starts its development as a swelling, which grows ventromedially, to approach the fellow of the opposite side. In the meantime, it gives off a butt for the maxillary arch. By the time mandibular swelling is developing, the downward growth of the forebrain can be visualized as the frontonasal process, which overhangs the stomatium, or the primitive oral cavity. The floor of the stomatium is covered by the buccopharyngeal membrane, By the fifth week of intrauterine life, the mandibular processes of both sides approach each other, and are fused. The methyl's cartilage extends from the area of future ear, to the midlines of the fused mandibular processes. At about sixth week, the cartilaginous rods begin to chondrify, which is continuous from the malleolus region to the future synthesis. The rods are separated in the midline. The rods support the forming skeletal framework of the mandible. The part of mandible mesial to the mental foramen undergoes endochondral ossification, whereas lateral to the mental foramen undergoes intramembranous ossification. The process of ossification proceeds anteriorly and posteriorly. Posterior intramembranous ossification forms the rest of the body and the ramus of the mandible. The formation of condylar process starts only at the 10th week. Hence till such time malleus and incus function as a temporary joint with a glenoid fossa of the temporal to permit mandibular movements. The methyl's cartilage is replaced largely by bone and the remnant of it is left as the bones malleus and incus. The condylar cartilage is a secondary cartilage and its origin is unrelated to methyl's cartilage, which is a primary cartilage. 
The condyle arises as a separate mesenchymal condensation that is cone shaped at about 10th week. The process of ossification does not start till 14th week. The cartilage is replaced by bone, except the region of the head of the condyle superiorly, which is maintained till teens for future growth. Now that condyle is established, the TMJ is shifted anteriorly. Coronoid process develops from secondary cartilage that arises at about 10th 14th week in utero. The ossification center is at the site of future Meckel's cartilage, one on either side. Ossification proceeds anteriorly and posteriorly from here and stops at the site of future lingula. As an anomaly, there is failure of fusion of both the mandibular processes from both sides that leads to a midline cleft. This is a rare occurrence.